Hey, arty friends. Today we're going to do something fun. I am challenging myself to use these Crayola washable watercolors to paint this cute but fairly simple illustration here. So, um, this will be a bit of a tutorial, a bit of a challenge, and I hope it'll be a whole lot of fun. This illustration was sketched on Canson XL watercolor paper using a pink colored lead. I have here Crayola 16 count water washable watercolors, a cup of clean water, and a selection of brushes. I may end up tightening my details using Crayola color pencils at the very end. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the brush that came with this set. It looks like it is a camel hair brush, which is a step up from the plastic bristle brushes they used to include when I was a child. I'm going to wash out the sizing. And we're going to pull out a whole bunch of hairs from this brush because this thing is going to shed. I will at some point try to use this brush, but I am not going to use this brush for the majority of the piece because I don't think that will work too well. And I'm going to do most of my mixing here in this palette. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use some of this beautiful, beautiful light blue. Mix it up a bit and paint a background. Now that that's dried, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and mix up a skin tone for her. So I'm going to take some clean water and I'm going to grab a little bit of brown, a little bit of red, and a little bit of yellow. And I need to make sure I mix enough that I can go in and do it in one go because with these Crayolas, you're not really going to get a lot of layers out of them, so you need to get the color or a color you can live with as quickly as possible. And I apologize for the noise. Even when I try to take myself out of the midst of the hurricane, the hurricane seems to find me. So I've got some red, I've got some brown, I'm going to grab some yellow, and normally what I would do with this is I would swatch it. And I have to be careful because some parts of this are still wet. Oh, that's not going to work. And there's just not enough red in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab that up with a rag and I'm going to try and grab a little bit more red. In fact, that's probably orange as well as this pink here. That's probably what I should have grabbed in the first place. And I'm going to cover the same area. Now with Crayolas, it, there's some problems. You're gonna have problems blending and you're gonna have problems um, layering because these have a lot of glycerin in them and that's what makes them so water, water reactive, water soluble. And they also utilize dyes. So the combination of the two means they're gonna wash out of children's clothing with great results, but it makes them very, very frustrating paint with. However, knowing that we have that to look forward to, we can do a little bit more to kind of prepare for it. So for this illustration, I'm really just going to try and hit the shadows on her face.
then I'm going to try and use a thirsty brush to kind of blend out some of the areas. So we don't have as much standing water on the paper either. And I'm fairly happy with the results, so I'm going to let this dry. So her skin dried a lot nicer than I kind of thought it would. In my prior experiences with Crayola watercolors, sometimes, you know, they fight you more. So, but I think keeping things kind of simple is really the smartest way to approach this. So I'm grabbing a couple of different blues and I'm going to use it just really water down really light as the shading in her eyes. And then I'm also going to do a little bit where her teeth are gonna go. I'm also going to use some of this pink that's over to the side, kind of off camera a little bit. And I'm gonna use that on her cheeks and eventually on her lips. So I'm going to blend this out a little bit, but I want to be careful because I don't want to kind of over mess with it. I'm do something on the bottom of her nose as well. And then there's going to be areas of her skin that I am going to want to darken. So rather than doing what I would normally do, allowing the color I have mixed to evaporate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of the brown, which isn't a particularly saturated brown. It's not a very dark brown. You'd have to mix a lot of black in with it. And I'm just going to use it right now on the inside of her ears, but I'll probably also use it here where her hair will have cast a little bit of shadow. The red did not come out quite like I had hoped, but when we're messing with Crayolas like this, there isn't a lot of room to fix things, so you just kind of have to make your peace with how it turns out and be willing to move on. You can always possibly blend it out a little bit more using color pencils or even using markers. All right, so some things are a little more dry than others. I'm gonna go back into that brown, mix a little bit with the flesh tint, and I'm gonna try to get the area under her nose and above her eyes that filled in with blue, so it needs to be fixed a little bit. So there's no way 
I'm gonna be able to do this perfectly. Um, and that's not really, oh, look at this. There's a, probably a skin tone right here. Although it looks more like orange now that I think about it. But there's probably no way that I can do this perfectly. So I'm not really even trying to make a perfect picture. I'm just trying to make the best looking thing I can and demonstrate it for those of you who are using Crayolas in your art. And there are other artists, as I've said in some of my other Crayola videos, there are other artists who can do a really phenomenal job with these sort of materials. If you're looking for inspiration, I highly recommend you check out Nintala, N-I-N-T-A-L-A, -A, Nintala's DeviantArt. They do some really impressive stuff with Crayola watercolors. This is mostly me just seeking some redemption, trying to apply what I've learned since the last time I did this. And also trying to share an affordable method of watercolor for World Watercolor Month because I really, really just wanna see you guys give painting a try. So I'm gonna give it my best shot, apply what I've learned, and then try to problem solve and fix any, any ugly or botched work, like what I did just now. Probably not going to turn out super great. So what I'm also going to do is step away from it and let it dry and come back to it. So that actually dried better than I thought. So that's good. I'm happy about that. So I'm going to do the rainbow hair for her as well. And the reason I'm going to do that is because um, it just seems like something a lot of people are interested in. And it's been fun to demonstrate it in multiple ways. And also I think doing it in Crayola is going to provide a real challenge for me. So I'm actually going to do it the reverse of what I've been doing where I start with the dark color or rather we start with the dark color up here and get light down here. We're going to start with the light color and then get dark. So what I'm going to start out by doing is I'm going to start with yellow. And I kind of want to go yellow to green because I've been doing yellow to orange a lot. And I want to leave lots and lots of room for highlights. Now I'm working with a fairly wet, floppy brush. And when it comes to Crayola, that tends to uh, inspire and invite problems. So I'm just going to have to try and be a little more careful. We're probably not going to get a lot of shading on this, so I'm not going to stress out about trying to do that. I'm just going to try and get like really nice, clean, bright color. And I may have to use a marker or a pen or color pencils to kind of help add details. Now. Another problem with Crayola is that their watercolors are very full of glycerin. So they have, there's problems sometimes with um, painting over, but also problems with using color pencils. So I'm using a little bit of the bright light green, which isn't really doing much of a color difference from the yellow.
light. So that's a lot of light. Let's see if we can do, oh, maybe I should do some orange at the top. And then you can see the brown has reactivated and is bleeding into the hair. So I see a lot of like hand letterers on Instagram using, or the, rather I say using, but the Crayolas are in their shots, but I kind of have doubts as to whether or not they're actually able to use these for what they want. Just based on my experiences using them in challenges and demonstrations. So after I finish doing the hair, I'm going to remove the camera from my tripod and we're going to we're going to do a little close up tour. I say that though and like I mentioned earlier, I do know artists who are actually very adept with these, so I'm a big fan of using what you have and not allowing other people to make you feel intimidated or like your supplies aren't good enough. So if you're, if you can make these work, that is amazing and all power to you. So as you guys can see, I kind of overpaint the layer I want. So I, I took the green further down than I really wanted the green and I did the same for the yellow and that's so I have kind of a blended transition layer. But what might work better for these, instead of trying to do wet into wet because they're so full of glycerin, is what might work better would be to do each layer and allow it to dry and that you get that way you get really crisp delineated layers. because they're getting just a little bit soapy. I'm having a hard time getting all the blue out from my brush, grab some of this earned as well. I really don't like what's happened over here in the bangs. So I'm going to use a piece of paper towel and dab that up and uh, probably go in and correct it later on. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of this darker blue, which looks like it is extremely chalky. Oh, that's actually kind of a purple. All right, I think I'm gonna let that dry and we'll see what we end up with. There's another layer or area I wanna clean up over here on her cheek. So it's hard to layer because it will literally replace the color underneath. It'll reactivate it and basically replace it, which is what happened over here on her hair. So I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna let this dry and then come back to it. We'll see what we got. So this isn't entirely dry. I'm going to go into some areas though and kind of 
maybe reinforce some of the colors. We'll see, we'll find out, or I'll make a mess. Could go either way. So I'm grabbing the light green, which is so light, it doesn't really read as green at all. It reads more as like a yellow. And I'm kind of trying to blend it in with not necessarily much effect. A little bit better over here. And I'm trying really hard not to lift that prior la prior layer because that's something that tends to happen with Crayola, or rather with the Crayola watercolors, is they tend to be really, really prone to lifting. So I'm just trying to get some of these colors to maybe blend and transition a little bit better. And after I finish doing this, I'm gonna to have to clean my brushes really, really well because these Crayola washable watercolors also have a tendency to leave a lot of sediment in your brush. And that's due to the optical brighteners they use to make the colors so um, bright and appealing for young artists. On that note though, if you're looking for higher quality watercolors for younger artists, I really recommend either the Prang watercolors or the Jack Richson Yarka student watercolors. I can link both of those and I've reviewed both of those. So you guys can check out those reviews. They handle a lot better and they don't contain as much glycerin, but they're more prone to staining. So if you have a young artist who's a little bit older who would like to start doing watercolor, I think those would be a fantastic gift for them. Still trying to get the green out of the orange. doesn't want to layer either. All right, that's okay. I have a little bit of that light green. I'll try to get the blending a little bit better. This is a messy piece. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I need to quit messing with the hair so much because it's not really not really getting better. Crayolas will always be the challenge. I consistently revisit and I consistently seem to fail. That's all right. We've all, we've all got our weaknesses. Can't be good at everything. This gives me a renewed appreciation too for those artists who do use Crayola watercolors and can do some really amazing things with them. Clearly, not all of us are capable of the same. I'm also gonna go into that lip color, or rather remix it, so grabbing some more pink. And I gotta find somewhere where I can rest my hand where it's not gonna rest in wet paint.
And then I think with her eyes, I'm going to do something kind of unusual. So we've got what, black and dark red, pink. All right, so I'm going to grab kind of an orangey pink color. This is probably supposed to be like their pre-mixed skin tone. And while it's still wet, I'm going to drop in some of this pink. Then I'm going to grab some red violet. and drop that in at the top and we'll see what we get. So I got the inside of her mouth done. I'm going to do her eyebrows in an orange and dark pink. Then I'm going to step away for a while and give this a chance to dry. And I think rather than trying to tighten it up with color pencils, there is so much glycerin on the page. You can see how shiny it is. I guess I over applied in her hair. There's really no getting a color pencil on top of that. You're basically carving it into the glycerin. So rather than fight that, I'm just going to use a brush pen to ink it. And then I will probably cheat a little bit and use some white gouache for highlights. So checking in on this and it still looks wet. Over here though, it's dried a lot lighter than it went down. This is gonna be one of those that's gonna take a long time to dry. So I'll go ahead and show you guys what I plan on inking it with. And that is my Sakura Pigma FB. Now this is a waterproof pen. I could have done the line art first and then painted on top of it. But I've just been in kind of a phase for these sort of sketch watercolors where I like painting it first on top of a colored lead and then inking it after that. All right, it looks like this might actually be dry. Now, usually when I'm checking to see if something's still wet, I look for the reflection of the water, but because these paints have so much glycerin in them, they're going to have this sort of ref Ooh! <laughs> reflective shiny sheen. Oh, that's gross. Okay, I'm gonna try to fix that. I probably can't, but I'm gonna try so. I've got just water on the brush. And I'm just going to go in with some of the dark blue. That's going to affect my ability to ink this, but that's, that's okay. I'm also really trying to use the motion of the brush as much as possible for this piece to get as much sort of decent brush making because I really can't rely on the paints themselves to carry it. And I think in some of my other videos, I've talked about how I may have bad experiences with a paint on um, cellulose paper, like what I'm using here, which is Biggie XL, and then use that, the same paint on a cotton rag paper and have a much better experience. 
I'm a little tempted to see whether or not that would hold true with these Crayolas, but it honestly feels like kind of a waste of good paper to do that. So unless you guys really, 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 really want to see how these would handle on a nicer cotton rag paper, that's just not going to happen. I'm not going to do that. And I'm also getting this weird wax resist with this, which does tend to happen when I use Crayola, um, any kind of their, their washable colors that tends to happen. Now I did an experiment with their mixing color set as well as with their educational set. I found those easier to work with. Um, I also found that the lifting problems that I have with these wasn't an issue with those so if you really are set on using Crayolas for your watercolor illustration I would recommend those over these these are just some I picked up at Walmart kind of impulsively I really just wanted to end World Watercolor Month with something super accessible to the largest number of people. And I think, I think the price sticker, no, I removed the price sticker. Let's see if I can find, no, but I think I paid under $3 for these 18 watercolors. So this is a very, very affordable set, but I really, really can't recommend it. And the rainbow hair is really a simple technique that has a lot of visual impact. It looks really impressive, but it's actually very easy to do. So that's why I opted to go with this. bottom part is still really 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 wet so before I can go too much further than with this I'm gonna have to give that a chance to dry but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video I hope I was able to demonstrate some techniques that might make using these watercolors a little bit easier for you particularly if this is all you have to work with I hope I showed you guys some new things um, if you have any tips and tricks for working with Crayola washable watercolors, if you know any way to really get them to perform their best without spending a bunch of outside money, I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. I have other Crayola demonstration, Crayola tutorial, Crayola review videos here on this channel as well. And I also have a huge cheap art supply playlist here on the channel as well as a few cheap art supply reviews over at natosoup.blogspot.com. So if the reason you're watching this is because you're looking for affordable art supplies, I definitely have you covered. If you're watching this because you are interested in watercolor, I've got you covered too. 
I have a watercolor basic series that spans not only this channel, but also is ongoing on my blog. So if you're interested in learning how to watercolor or improving your watercolor, I really hope you guys will check those out. And I'll make sure I have a link to the playlist in the cards for this video. And I'll make sure I link my blog as well. So I'm kind of working around the wet areas and there's enough of them where I'm just going to have to stop what I'm doing for a little while and let this finish drawing and come back to it. The paint itself is thick and pretty glycerin-y. Um, it was a little bit like skating or doing a roller coaster when I was inking this, but I think the ink went down okay and it's gonna dry okay. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of white gouache to add a few details here and there. I wanna keep it really light because this kind of stuff can't really take a whole lot, so. And I'm not using the white included in the Crayola set because that's just not going to work. See, it picked up some of the blue there. I'm not even gonna try to fix that. I'm just gonna leave it as it is and call this piece done. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as I revisit the Crayola Washable Watercolor Challenge. This was painted to help celebrate World Watercolor Month and inspire you guys to pick up your paints, your pencils, your brushes, and your paper and get painting. If you're looking for more watercolor tutorials, tips, tricks, and more, consider subscribing to this channel and head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. I hope I see you guys again really soon and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys!